go. Cool. Isn't Martin supposed to be joining also? I'll just see if he RSVP'd. Yes, he's supposed to be. He can, I believe. Uh, I think Martin might be in a bit of a difficult time zone. That's from memory. He's in Europe. He's in the UK. Yeah. So it's not yeah. terrible. No. It's nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock and uh, nine p.m. for him, so it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, he hasn't responded. Yes. I think on the doodle he said that this was a bad time for him. So, so we'll we'll see if he turns up. Maybe he'll turn up in a little while. But Thomas is here for comms team. So I am, I am, I am. <laughs> Just get this screen up. There we go. Everyone see that? Yes. Okay, so um, if you haven't had a chance to read the minutes um please do they're attached to the the invite uh everybody okay if we take them as read there's a recording on youtube as well if you want to have a look at it later yes fine okay um and just to like to say welcome to gully our newest uh regional rep who's uh joining us from israel tel aviv so uh thank you very much for agreeing to the ridiculous hours of these calls and uh, for taking up the work and contacting your clubs uh, and, and just uh, generally trying to foster running in the region. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. Okay. Um, so we've got a, a Jake Fedorowski, which is uh, who uses they, them um, joining us in a little while. And Michael's going to, uh, I think, is Michael online? Yes, Michael is online. So Michael's um, arranged that. Uh, so he'll be here uh, in another 20 minutes. But um, before we do that, maybe we want to just get an update from, uh, I don't know, Richard, was your Brooks scholarship update going to take more than 20 minutes or do you want to leave that till after or do you want to no, do that? Two, two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So um, maybe Thomas, you could let us know uh, how communications has been going in the last uh, three months since you guys have taken it over. Oh, here's Martin. Me specifically only? Well, the comms team is Martin, Buddy, and uh, Thomas. So any, yeah. I was just going to say you because Buddy's walking and Thomas and Martin wasn't here. But uh, yeah, Martin you, just joined. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. So from so, my end on, I can just say that I've been managing the Instagram and getting good traction on just the movement through that, you know, just on that platform alone. Um, also been connecting it to the Facebook. So all the posts that have gone up have gone to the, the sorry, all the posts on Instagram have gone to the Facebook as well. Um, other than that, nothing really exciting. There's some good suggestions and it's nice to collaborate across the, the clubs worldwide. And as well, like we had a new, we had our first new member in, India joining the international front runners as well and it was nice to kind of promote them there on and there was some good interactions you know so it's more like connecting personally interpersonally with the clubs through it um, I personally like Instagram as a platform the most probably why I was biased enough to take it but uh, yeah other than that can't say much else yeah and of course we've had Chiang Mai join us as well so Buddy's uh, very productive he's got two clubs in the space of three months so that's very, oh, thank very well you. done thank you and uh yeah we had those i think i we somebody popped it up on twitter as well uh and the other social platforms so that's good uh martin would you like to give your comms update what you've been doing for comms he's searching for the mute button <laughs> Uh, sorry for that, um, Chris. Yes. So um, basically, ever since ever since we've uh, I've started on the communications, it's um, never um, it's always been like a feeling that um, we're posting a lot of stuff on Instagram and consequently Facebook, but we're not really um, posting much on Twitter. So 
what I've personally tried doing is, although we've, we, we've sort of said we're not prioritizing Twitter as one of the main platforms, I've sort of tried ensuring that whatever, whatever we post or whatever I post comes on Twitter as well. So whether it's just a simple hashtag or whether it's just a, so it's a lot different to Instagram in terms of like there, there, there wasn't many images. So it was usually just a simple post or a hashtag, but just making sure we've got that sort of presence as well, basically. So yeah, that's the update I would give basically. So mm -hmm. um, whether it be Cheng Man, you know, um, front runners, um, the, the latest front runners joining us or um, anything else, it's just making sure that we're basically present on all essentially major platforms, basically. Yep. Yes. Thank you. And I, I know there's a lot of um, Twitter posts that come from the European clubs. So I don't know whether that's anything to do with you posting things there, um, but uh, there's uh, a lot of, yes, a lot I, of... I, I usually, um, so I usually like a lot of the posts I see on Twitter and then basically just retweet. So um, then it's, it's basically when they would notice like we've, um, we've essentially retweeted something, they would basically like the post and, basically try and tag us into the post to basically stay on top so i think yeah i think that's that, that's part of what um what's driving out our twitter traffic as well so yes cool um Budi, do you have anything to add for comms no thank you so much like i said i think i think we are um probably um there's going to be like i don't know how to say it like Basically, there is a push. I think uh, a general trend, a trend that communication style is always going to be uh, evolving. We used to do like say mail letter letter mails, and now we have internet. Uh, it used to be emails, and I think we are moving forward towards social media that pushes things into people's timeline for better engagement. And yeah, like, you know, I can't wait for uh, to for us to uh, maximize the potential of uh, social media as a means of communications. Thank you. Over to you. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions or suggestions for the comms team? No? All good. Okay. Um, so newsletter then, in the light of what we just said there, do we want to do another newsletter for middle of the year, as we discussed? So we're we going to get um, reports together to compile a, a, a similar report that we did for the AGM? How do people feel about that? I mean, I think it was a stopgap because what we used to do was get everybody, all the regional reps in this to actually do a report, a verbal report, and that could go on for like two or three hours. So we thought that it'd be more generally useful to do a newsletter instead. Um, do you think that that is working or would you rather go back to doing reports in the meeting? Yes, Chris, if I can just step in, I guess I'm the first one and just say yes, I think that's definitely working. And one of the things I would say that um, came from my, um, my first regional meeting, which I've had quite recently was um, actually that a lot of the people weren't so, uh, a lot of the clubs weren't so involved with the first newsletter, but there was quite an engagement in terms of the clubs that participated in the meeting in terms of the second one. So I've sort of, I, I, I've sort of just politely indicated that, you know, we're sort of having another newsletter and they seemed quite um, as if they want to get involved and like a lot of them had stuff to submit. So um, they were asking for dates and deadlines. So I said, well, we don't currently have one just yet, but um, you know, it's, it, it just seemed like it's an atmosphere where people are willing to submit stuff. So I would quite, you know, I would quite like to go for the newsletter, especially considering the last one Although, you know, considering my best endeavors and trying to get as many clubs to submit something, we've only had a couple. So it just seems like a lot of, a, a lot more clubs from the Europe region are willing to submit something just now. So I would go for the newsletter, basically. Well, that'll be good. Yes, to get some more um, balanced reporting from, from Europe. So should we go ahead and pick a date for when we want the submissions in for the next one? I think um, maybe in two months time, is that too long? If we were to say sort of like first week of May, so, or is that is that too far off? Do you want to make it before Easter? 
Um, I was wondering when should we like uh, when do you ex do we expect to publish the newsletter? So the previous one was published in August, I believe. Um, so like, you know, it's been almost six months. Um, what are the like say the what do you call it? the frequency of newsletter that we are expecting? So like say once a year, once every six months. I'd say I think we thought once every six months was good. That quarterly okay. was too much and that annually was too little. So, okay. so I, like the previous one I guess we, we kind of want to get somewhere in between. So April, May would probably be a good date. I don't know what so, other so people like think. The, the, publish, the, the publishing would, would happen in April, you mean, or May? So I'd say we cut off submissions, say, beginning of May and publish mid-May, like two weeks to edit. Mm -hmm. We might even want to go a little earlier so that we can um, we can hit uh, the pride celebrations around the world, get them into the newsletter so people have time if they want to travel. Uh, I'm thinking we want to get the pride celebrations in. Some of them start in May, uh, a few even earlier. We want to get the um, Euro games into the uh, newsletter. Okay. Um, so I, I think to try to even publish by May 1st might be a good idea or sometime in very early in May. And as you recall last time, it took some time to finagle the newsletter into, into shape, into printable form. Well, what do you think we say like first I, I week of April for the submissions and the publication first week of May? Um, first week of April submission. And um, I think like, you know, like, um, if we can, if I and uh, like and I, Richard can uh, Get together we might be able to like say i uh, finish every like you know if we have every material it'll take us like say for uh 24 hours like you know like of editing or like say 48 hours or like an, a week to, to to get around to publish it i think i, I think, think that, uh, no no i i think that if we get a lot of people submitting this thing is going to turn into more than 60 pages it's going to be okay. quite a lot of proofing i'd say yeah. yep. proofing uh, first, and, first of and april. formatting yeah I'd give, april? I'd give yourself a realistic time frame uh -huh. i'd say we First of April is good, and, and we'll have a little bit of overlap there because people always are late. So we'll yeah. say first of April, but we'll probably take submissions. People, oh, we're sorry, we're late. We'll go until April seventh or April fifteenth. Basically, we can go until shortly before publishing. We we did that last time. We were getting submissions right up to like the day before. I agree. But, uh, but I think trying to publish in May first or early May. Should we call it the May Day edition? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's that's I love it. Good. Thank you. And I just come in and say something just in sure. terms of, so I was just thinking two things. Like last time it seemed that there was a bit of confusion on which platform to actually produce a newsletter on. Are we completely clear on whether we're going to use, what was it, what was the platform, that social media planning platform that we use? Well, I think the difficult problem was, um, so in terms of editing it, we, we, we've always used Google Docs. Yeah. But we could always use um, Teams because we do have a Teams system. So we could, oh, but, but then I, I suppose editing, you're still restricted to the web-based version of the editing on yeah. Teams. So Google Docs is probably the easiest one to assemble the content. And then I think uh, after that, because it's all formatted higgledy-piggledy and it's such a big document, if you turn it yeah. into a Word document, you end up with something that's far bigger than any social platform will allow you to store. So we ended up having to PDF it, I think. Was that right? Yes. yes. PDF is, to me, the, the most transportable platform. Uh, everybody seems to be able to open a PDF, and not everybody has Google. Yep. I mean, most people do, but yes. not everybody does. So, yeah. Super. I would put PDF on it. Yeah. And second thing, when we are getting submissions in from the different clubs, I was just thinking, if we get to the point where we are lacking um, content because people are not sending in or not responding and stuff like that. Is it possible we could then kind of say, right, is there an Instagram story or a picture um, or a post that you want highlighted in the newsletter instead? Well, that's, that's really up to the regional reps to do. So if they yeah. want to report something, I think in the past what um, people like Randy have done or, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Richard have, have actually got stats if they find that there's something important they want to report, so they go and do uh, their own report for that particular club. So there might be something significant that maybe the rep hasn't got back to them. They'll put in something significant about the club themselves. So it's up to the regional rep to do their section. Super, super. Good to know. Thanks plus, a lot, Chris. Plus, plus we've had interviews. Uh, Booty's had interviews in past editions, and those are always very popular. The, the last newsletter, I got a lot of comment from from 
the clubs that I'm connected with saying people read it. People read all 145 pages, how many pages we had. People read it. I think people like that. They like to see what's happening around the world. And the goal is to make us one big cohesive family rather than a bunch of scattered clubs who don't who don't know each other. Can I interview you next, Gali? Gali, can I interview you next? Sorry, what did you ask? Can I, can I interview you next? Buddy, yeah. Buddy does Sorry. a reporter at large series yeah. where he interviews uh, notable people around the world. So you can uh, you can be our next uh, his next victim. We fly Booty first class. To <laughs> no, no, no. I don't get one thousand US dollar reimbursement for that. Sorry. <laughs> well, Chris is using the private plane, so we can't use that for you. Sorry. No, it's a very small. <laughs> only, only one person. Small and the staff. Though. Yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, okay, well, that's great. So we'll set the date for the 1st of April to cut off submissions. So everybody please contact their clubs after mm -hmm. this and say, we want submissions for the next newsletter that's gonna be published on the 1st of May. And we'll, I'll, create, I'll get the Google doc um, up again and send the link around or Alan will send the link around with the, the notes from the meeting. And um, yeah, we can we can get cracking. It'll just be the same mm -hmm. template as last time, so everyone's familiar with that. Please try and restrict yourself to one or two photos for each club. And if you've got fifty photos that come in, try and mosaic them or something into one photo. Um, I know that that won't be what the club will want, but um, otherwise we're going to compile a thousand-page report every time. Uh, it's going to look like a government document at the end of the day. So um, yeah, brevity is the soul of wit and try and restrict yourself to a paragraph or two for each club rather than pages of stuff. Otherwise, we, we'll have to edit and we'll have to compress those photos because there's just, a, to, in order to get, I think it's under the five meg or gig limit or whatever it is for the, I think 50 gig for some, plat, 50, 50 gig for some platforms and 50 meg for other platforms. So in order to get under that limit, we've got to do some savage editing sometimes. Okay, um, anything else about any other comments from the newsletter? I just also want to say, I think with uh, all the social platforms, it's great that we're doing all this work, but there are a lot of people out there who do just don't want to be on, they're not on Facebook, not on Insta, not on Twitter. And so having that PDF that you can email around if people are interested is really valuable too, or put in the local distribution. Uh, however people get it, maybe there are people out there getting their um, news by MailChimp from their local clubs or something. So it's really handy for us to have a PDF copy that they can get an update at least twice a year. Martin, will you um, reach out to Eurogames and put together a little piece about Eurogames? Where, when? Yes, of course. Where? Yes, definitely. Yeah, perfect. That'd be I great. Great. Can I ask? A, can I make a? Can I make a request, please? <laughs> yeah. Can. can so can someone from the communications team just sort of reiterate what this what we just decided about the newsletter in a memo to all of the reps so we're all clear on what the submission timelines are and the publication of timelines of course i can do that not a problem yeah that would be great thanks i, I mean i there's been a lot of sort of conversation about it here and i'm not i just want to make sure that i am providing the right Thank dates to my clubs thanks Chris, speaking of which, did we have on the agenda, speaking of Euro games, jumping back, did we have on the agenda a discussion about AGM? Oh, uh, no, I haven't put that on, but we can talk about it, um, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna bring that up. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and Euro games might once again be a good venue since we have a critical mass of people. It worked out pretty well last year. Where, when is that? Again, sorry. Okay. So that, I believe it's the, 26 to the 30th of um, July. We decided that last meeting. If we did, it's in the minutes. Exactly. Read Great. them. <laughs> Oops. You have a much better memory than us. Somebody's got caught. <laughs> but we still should discuss um, um, from, you know what, what our plans are to, to have the meeting there. So, yeah, I think Xander and I will plan on going again. 
I think we'd all like to go if we can. We'll see what happens with, uh, well, maybe we're out of the woods with COVID. We'll see. Well, we might be at war. <laughs> well, there's that too. <laughs> yeah, Holl Holl Holland's always jumping to every war. It really sucks. I was actually surprised Australia's only got one war on at the moment. We've previously, in previous times, we've had three simultaneously. So um, we've overachievers. We slackened. We must. We must invade somewhere. <laughs> Maybe Fiji. Oh no, I don't Fiji. think so. Well, we already do. Whenever there's a, whenever the, we're allowed to go there for a holiday. <laughs> okay, sorry, my dog is trying to distract me. Uh, yeah. So, do you reckon it's two minutes, or do you want to wait until after Jake joins us for the Brooks Scholarship update? Me? No, I can do it really quick. So. Um, so first off, as you know, we have the uh, New Brooks Initiative, the Pride Initiative, which she basically just, uh, she had been kind of discussing, Raisa. Oh, and by the way, we have a new person at Brooks, Raisa, who replaced Brian. She's new to Brooks. She came from Nike. So she's kind of running on the, by the seat of her pants. It's a, it's a little bit going as we go. She, she's making things up. So for example, she initially had me send out the 25% discount to the whole world. But then I got an email from Devane in, um, in Singapore and he said they can't access it. And I went back to her and she checked and oh, I'm so sorry. It actually is only available at the moment to the US, but she's working on opening it up to Canada and Europe and she's, she's gonna hope, hopefully open up to the world. Anyway, so she hit me up with this, um, this pride initiative where they're gonna do a cheer kit, which they still don't know what's gonna be in it, but they're working on it, Think, fun things, fun and festive cheer, pride cheer things and money. And they don't know how much money and shirts and they don't know how many shirts. So I, I had to make the proposal very uh, non-specific. and I'm getting back to clubs. I've had clubs ask me for $13,000 and I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna give you 13,000. So I get them to give me alternatives. But right now I've been, uh, we have proposals. I'm looking at it right now. We have proposals from Buffalo, United States, from Copenhagen, from Long Beach, United States, from Omaha, United States, from Philadelphia, from Les Run in Philly, uh, from um, Provincetown, U.S. from Sydney and uh, from and that's it. And then we also right now have about 36 people who have applied to the 25% discount. Um, and some of many of those are from uh, particularly from uh, the UK. So uh, I'm hoping she gets that opened up to the UK and to the rest of the world shortly. Uh, but I feel like we need, you know, we're a worldwide organization with 100 and right now 116 clubs. Um, we really should have more proposals than that. And the cutoff is um, the March 1st. Um, so we need more you'll, proposals. I need you, more names for the 25% discount. That's you'll be getting one. <clears throat> you'll be getting one from Palm Springs this weekend. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. And 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 then uh, the other one was we distributed all the money. The the the, the big initiative, the 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 um, Brooks grant was 100% distributed except for Hong Kong, where we're still sitting on the funds waiting for Wayne or Hong Kong to tell us what to do with them. But everyone else got their money. Everyone was very appreciative. Uh, we are going to be asking people shortly to send back what they're doing with the money, get us pictures. Um, maybe part of the newsletter, maybe the newsletter after that. Uh, but Brooks is very interesting, interested in partnering with us and our PR, PR people, uh, our, our communications committee to get out the word about uh, what the clubs have done with the money. I have two questions for you, Richard. Oh it, are, is the list of recipients of the most recent grants published anywhere? I, I feel like I got two congratulation letters and then no more. Um, so right. is, can, is, so, is that so been published not, anywhere? So far, not published. The whole okay. steering committee saw the final report I created that gave the clubs and how much each one got. So you saw that, uh, but nothing has been public yet. And, and, and I think that Raisa wants me to come to her first before we go public and just confirm things with her and with her PR department. Um, so I, I need to create some kind of strategy. I mentioned to Chris a few weeks ago about adding that to our communications committee's next meeting to discuss that. 
Okay, thanks. The, the other question I had, and this was actually brought to my attention by Ari from Seattle Frontrunners, who is here in Palm Springs this weekend, and he's promoting the 25% discount to his club. Is, is there a cutoff for, for that 25% discount also Monday, March 1st? Yeah, once again, seat of the pants. Initially, she said they could keep a, they could have a rolling member, a rolling 25% discount, but then, uh, Two days ago, she changed it and she said they want all the names on March 1st. There's probably some leeway there, March 2nd, March 3rd, but then they won't update the list for another year. Okay. So, so in that... fact, all the U.S. clubs should give me their names. And if you don't give me your name by March 1st, then you have to wait a year. Okay, I'll need to update my club on that because I didn't publish that as part of my initial... Yeah, sorry to be so scattered on that, but I'm, I'm actually working with, she's very nice, but she is a bit scattered and she's new to the job. So somewhat understandable. Yeah, no worries, thanks. And as you say, they're making it up as they go along. And and we appreciate whatever they do. Yep, it makes <laughs> right. a difference, makes a difference. I'm certainly not gonna complain. So uh, I, I dressed in Brooks gear head to toe this morning for our, <laughs> <laughs> for our Saturday run. Literally, I had a, a shirt that has a big Brooks logo across the chest, hat, That's shorts, great. shoes, you name it. That's and I great. did a sort of big, big promotion <laughs> for Brooks today at our run. Thank so you, thank it, you. it was it, kind it, of fun. It is kind of one of those things where America is a farmhouse in the, in the woods at nighttime and the lights are all on and they can't see that there's anybody else out there. Um, I think uh, when when I, when uh, not Raisa but her predecessor was talking about it and saying you can just go to the online store and do such and such and I said well we can't order anything from Brooks on the online store in Australia so have you are you sure about that and she went oh okay <laughs> so I think uh, yeah your mileage may vary yeah. Um, but yeah I'm sure everything works in the states just whatever. Okay. Um, so look, Richard, Richard one, one well, Chris, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry Richard, for that. Oh. Yes, Wayne. Richard, can um, the merchandise include caps? Uh, she was very specific shirts, but... Okay, no, no, but uh, if you're doing it another time, can we look at caps? Because remember well, you did the IFR cap, it'd be fantastic if we all had... Yeah. Well, I, I did the IFR cap out of my pocket. Um, yeah, I know, I know. I know. Brooks, Brooks um, you know, my, I've had clubs ask me about other gear, and I say, put it in your proposal. Oh, I'm, okay. giving Brooks, I'm giving Brooks everything. They, the club that asked for $13,000, that's going to go to Brooks. What the hell? Give it to them. Let them say, no, that's too much. No, we can't do caps. So if you, if you have a proposal for caps, let's throw it in. One of their, their cheer pack thing um, included a specific kit, which was hat, special shoes and pride shirt, which were all done in a specific design. And the idea was there would be space for the club to put their particular logo on it as That's a sort true. of post fix thing. So you would order the shirts and then print the logo on them somehow. She okay. wasn't clear about how that would work. And I didn't, it didn't sound very flexible to me. So uh, we'll just have to watch this situation as it evolves. But they certainly do have designs for caps, shoes and shirts. Uh, so we'll just have to see. She's definitely not as easy to work with as the last group, but she's she's less experienced. And by the way, India came up with our, our uh, Bangalore club, uh, came up with a design and they actually contacted Brooks India, independent of us. And Brooks India got very excited about it and they're gonna supply shirts and they're gonna pay for the design. And, but they came back and said they, they don't like the design and they made a different design and the Bangalore club didn't like the design. So I, and the Bangalore club was a little annoyed and I said, well, go back to them and you know respectfully ask that you want your design, not their, and it was slight differences, it wasn't major. I said, but there is, as far as I've heard from Raisa, there are no design requirements. We, we're in charge of the design. So if we have to, we'll go to Raisa and let Raisa fix it. But apparently they went back to, they went back to Brooks India and they <coughs> gave in. They said, okay, we'll go with your design. So. Yeah, and I think it looks good. It looks really good, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, Richard, conscious we're Richard, cutting one, in. Yeah, okay, just one quick then. point. Yeah, one quick point, Richard, on that. Um, uh, the proposal coming in. Somebody, somebody's um, laughing. Who's laughing? Where's all the it's, laughing? It's Buddy's. Uh, Buddy's uh, race, where he's he's, oh. he's arrived at the front line. <laughs> oh, okay. Congratulations, Buddy. Go ahead, Alden. 
Okay, yeah, I just wanted to mention that when you're considering those proposals coming in from March 1st, just look at our current membership. You mentioned uh, Provincetown, they are not renewed yet for this year. So you might want to might want to use that as leverage, but we can talk it's about a, that under. It's an excellent idea. And in fact, uh, I was already thinking, Rais is very specific that the 25% discount only go to quote unquote paid members. And mm -hmm. I haven't I haven't said to her not all clubs have dues. So uh, you know a paid member isn't necessarily a paid member everywhere, but telling the but club it should, be, it should be a paid member to us. Or, but, or, or but, a, but 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 no, I like member to, telling telling the clubs that next year when they it's time to renew the Brooks discount that the member <laughs> has to be a, an active active member. Uh, is an incentive to get them to become active, whether that means paid or renew. And then I, I love your approach, the same thing with the proposals. I need to go to Provincetown. We need to get a list and say, yeah, but you're not a member yet. So um, that's very important. And I think our rules say, I think the Brooks rules say member clubs, or at least when we did the first uh, initiative. So right. thank you. Right. That's cool. Uh, I'd suggest we can catch this up in the, uh, yep. the discussion point later. Uh, so we're cutting into Jake's time. Uh, Michael, would you Hi, like Jake. to introduce Jake and the point that we've got here? No, welcome, Jake. Sure, sorry. Um, so yes, I will introduce Jake, although I've never had the pleasure of meeting Jake in person myself. <laughs> so, um, but we've exchanged um, some emails and I've certainly been following um, the activity that Jake is initiating with regards to um, provide, creating a more inclusive environment for non-binary runners. Um, so Jake is joining us from Seattle Front Runners. And I should say, um, Seattle Front Runners is a very active club. I think they are seeing their highest membership numbers ever. I think they've crested 400 members um, recently they are undertaking a lot of really significant initiatives this year um, coming off of the sort of racial reckoning that happened here in the United States last, last year. They're doing a lot of outreach to um, sort of different communities within the Seattle area. They're, they've considered moving their meeting locations to neighborhoods that are, are more centered, that are, that are less affluent. Um, um, to try and create awareness and, and be more inclusive um, to not just the non-binary uh, community, but to other communities as well. So I do know that for a couple of years, at least the Seattle Pride Run has had a non-binary gender category for their race. Um, I'm happy to say that Palm Springs front runners, I'll selfishly promote the fact that we will be offering a non-binary gender category in our pride run this year for the first time. But Jake is doing a lot of work um, in this space and I am happy to have Jake here and tell us what they've been working on. Awesome, thank you so much, Michael. And hello everyone, um, thank you for having me. Um, I wonder if I might be able to share my screen to kind of have this little visual presentation go along with this. Um, I wonder if Chris, I believe you're the host. Perfect, thank you. Getting the permissions. Perfect. All right, can everyone see the, the visual there? Yes, Perfect. yes. So as Michael said, um, my name is Jake Fedorowski. My pronouns are they, them. Uh, and I'm on the board of Seattle Front Runners, where I chair the membership and communications committee. Uh, as you may have seen in an email that I sent to, I think most of the people on this call a few weeks ago, uh, I'm a non-binary runner and have been working to make the sport more inclusive, uh, especially for non-binary folks. Uh, for the purposes of this chat, this presentation, I'm going to be using non-binary as an umbrella term that basically is you know, identifying anyone that identifies outside of the male, female uh, gender binary. Uh, so what started all of this was the realization that every time I went to register for a race, uh, I was being forced to choose between a men's or women's division, two, two identities that I don't subscribe to, which then led to a conversation with a race director about creating a non-binary division. And while, he was very interested in the idea. 
he had a lot of questions, um, you know, follow-up questions that I wasn't able to answer in that moment. So I did my research. I had conversations with 30 plus race directors, athletes, clubs, organizations, and even governing bodies such as USATF uh, to better equip myself. Uh, so based on a study completed in 2021, uh, by the Williams Institute at U UCLA School of Law. Uh, there are 1.2 million non-binary adults ages 18 to 60 years old in the United States alone, which makes up for about 11% of the LGBTQIA plus population in the States. That's 1.2 million. So I decided there's got to be some endurance athletes out there within that 1.2 million. I'm going to group them all together. I'm going to create a cohort with the hopes that we could serve as both a support group for one another and then also as like a sounding board for, for feedback and for, you know, a place to go as we start to work on this inclusion efforts or on the inclusion efforts. That group now consists of about 40 individuals and continues to grow every day. Um, and once that was established, I basically came to the conclusion that we had two needs or two projects. One of those projects is a, was a database uh, for any and all races that have a non-binary division so that those who are seeking for more inclusive events can actually find them, as well as a guide for race directors who are looking to create this division but didn't really know or don't really know how to start. I also imagine this guide could be used by people like me or allies who, who are wanting to have these conversations, but didn't have the knowledge or didn't feel confident enough to step into that space in order to initiate that conversation. So as for the first project, the, the database, we've collected data from about 200 races so far, primarily in the US, a few in Canada. Um, the spreadsheet is currently being shared with anyone who wants access to it. And I can gladly make that available to everyone on this call if you would like to share it more widely. Uh, the next step with that is to fundraise and find a developer to create a website or, or some sort of app that is able to share that information more widely. As for the second project, I've been working really hard on this guide for the past few weeks. Um, and I've, I've distributed the second draft of it to a, a small, you know, diverse group of people from the industry to get their feedback. Um, I'm in talks with someone who's being contracted by Running USA to create a template for a trans and non-binary inclusion policy. And our, our idea is that these two, you know, that policy in this guide could exist as, as a pair. These, these two materials could be shared more widely with the industry, uh, you know, in the coming weeks or months as, as races are looking for materials and, and resources to, to make their events more inclusive. So still kind of in the works of how that might come to be and what that will look like. Um, and, you know, whether there will be some sort of compensation involved for those who helped, uh, you know, draft this. Um, but anyways, all that's in the works. Uh, so why, why have I come to you? Why have I come to IFR? Uh, there are two reasons. My dog is making lots of noises. Ollie, stop it. Um, first of all, uh, I come to IFR to ask for support with this initiative. As an international LGBTQIA plus sport organization, I see a wonderful opportunity here for IFR to help advocate uh, for those that this initiative will benefit. I leave it to this committee and to the organization at large to decide what sort of resources, time and dedication, um, you know, the, the organization is able and willing to give. And second, as someone who is working diligently to make Seattle Front Runners a more welcoming and inclusive club, um, you know, for everyone on the LGBTQIA plus spectrum, as Michael referenced, uh, I come to this committee to ask what sort of diversity, equity, and inclusion work is being done at IFR so that clubs feel more empowered to do this work and, and to speak on behalf of their non-binary members and, and for those who identify, um, you know, with these different identities. Um, I noticed that in IFR's mission statement and constitution, as it currently is laid out on the website, uh, there are some, there's some outdated terminology, you know, in accordance with the article 3.4 of the constitution, which is to develop the activities, organizations, and structure of IFR to strive towards gender parity. I, I, I ask IFR, or I call on IFR to update this language 
um, you can see uh, in both this slide and then the next slide that um, there are some highlighted parts of language that that could and should be updated um, to I you know to be more representative of the entire queer spectrum. And then I also ask this committee and the organization at large, you know, what kind of conversations are being had around inclusivity? You know, I can't speak to the greater international community of clubs, but the membership of the clubs in the US primarily is consisting of white cis gay men. And you know, this is a problem. This is a problem both within Seattle Front Runners and within the US as a whole. And I would imagine with some clubs in the international community, um, and it's it's challenging because we're an organization, we meaning uh, Seattle Front Runners, are an organization that really prides ourselves on being a space for everyone on the queer spectrum. But when you look at our membership, that's not reflected. And so why is that? I'm currently leading the board uh, to fix this problem and to find those solutions, but I challenge IFR to do the same. You know, might a position be created um, you know, within this committee or within this committee or within the organization at large that's focused on DEI work, might a DEI statement be created and promoted and shared um, with the with the mission, the constitution, the, the who are we language that IFR currently has? You know, uh, international front runners exist. There are there are many clubs operating around the world, and I think that is a wonderful thing. But who do we say those clubs are for and who actually feels welcome and included in those environments that those clubs create? You know, there's, there's so much work to be done. There's so many questions to be asked and to answer. And I know it's, it's daunting. I'm, I'm going through it with this non-binary guide, um, but it's necessary. It's super important. You know, our community has for so long been pushed to the side and erased, but you know, there, and there are certain letters of the LGBTQIA plus acronym who have found freedom and affirmation in today's society in, in the US, um, but others have not. There are certain letters that are still left out of many things, uh, many organizations, many spaces. So how can we as Seattle Front Runners, as the, the larger IFR organization, make changes so that that is not the case, so that we are inclusive of the entire spectrum of queer identities? Um, so that's just a little bit about the work that I'm doing both on the non-binary side of things, but then also weaving in some of the, the things I'm noticing both within Seattle Front Runners and the IFR community, um, you know, and trying to answer some of these questions about how to make both the organization and the sport more inclusive. So just wanted to introduce those things, pose some questions uh, to the committee, and then just open it up if there are any thoughts, questions, ideas um, related to either of those things, I would love to hear them and I'd love to, to chat about, um, you know, any DEI work that has maybe been happening uh, that maybe I just don't know about within the IFR space. Hi, Jake. Um, also Hi. You can hear me. Uh, yeah, my I name can. Is Budi. My name is Budi and um, I identify as questioning or like say queer questioning or exploring right now. I haven't made the full transition to, or like say, I haven't declared if I was non-binary or anything. Um, but yeah, like, you know, like, um, I do notice, like, say, well, everything that you said, like, about, like, say, the word, like, say, male and female, and, like, say, how when we have our database of membership, it's just male and female. And um, I think, like, you know, I, I, this is the things that I've been thinking of, like, say, um, discussing as well. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I'd love to, like, interview you as well for our coming upcoming newsletter, like, you know, like, um, and, discuss a lot of things that you know um like you know we, you know we can we can take, take it on from there as well so um get in touch after waiting with me and uh, i can't wait to have a like, one 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 on one call with you um thank you yeah thank you so much it's so nice to meet you uh, jake i was curious uh did uh, were you involved in the uh brooks uh, in um uh, they asked me to connect people uh, in in the non-binary community with them. Uh, recently, were you involved in that effort by Brooks? Um, I believe so. Was it? Do you know what specifically it was for? I've been involved okay. with Brooks for a few different things. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was interviews for um, their website, newsletter, website. They were going to do. Uh, 
um, they're doing an outreach to the non-binary community just in the last few weeks. And I okay. introduced them to a number of people around the country. And I, I'm hoping you were involved since that's you guys are so close to Brooks. But if you weren't involved, I can I can do an uh, an introduction to uh, yeah Raisa, who handled that. Yeah, that would be great. I've I've chatted with them about a few different things. Um, there they've been a really great support system in a lot of this, and I've chatted with Brooks on like non-binary panels to to kind of share more about this uh, with their with their staff. But I would love a connection um, to be made if that is possible. So Raisa isn't one of the people you've spoken with? Doesn't no, that I don't, I've spoken, usually it's Shannon Woods is who I connect with. Okay, let me let me pull up the email exchange. It was a few weeks ago. And the other one, have you spoken with CC at uh, Les Run? I have, I have had many conversations with CC. Because they're doing a really strong um, effort. Uh, she's very involved with the Philadelphia Distance Run and they've mm -hmm. now created the non-binary division. And I know she's been doing a big push. So I'm glad you're connected to her. Those were, those were my two questions. Perfect. Uh, Jake, can you hear me? Hi. Yeah, I can. Um, I, I, I'm Brad Miaslato. Um, I, along with like Wayne Morgan and Alden, we were, the, we were part of the, the group that came up with the um, IFR constitution and bylaws. And we recognize that it's been, it, you know, at the time we, we did this, we tried to, um, the reason why we added this issue about male and female and gender parity was because we, at the time, the Federation of Gay Games wanted us to promote that. And so that's why we made a conscious effort of putting that in the, um, in the bylaws. Now we have recognized that things have changed and, and I appreciate all the work that you're doing. Um, We've had questions from different clubs about, you know, when we send out our renewal notices, we ask um, about their membership, and we've we've added a non-binary category to that um, listing. But um, we still are looking at that. In fact, I was just talking to Alden about this a couple of weeks ago. So um, we thank you for for being here, and we definitely want to work with you. In, in making sure that, you know, we're as inclusive as possible. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, it's funny, we're, we're going through, uh, one of the projects I'm pushing our board to go through right now is to update our own bylaws, which has many of the same issues. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just kind of top of mind right now. Um, but yeah, I would love to, you know, if, if you're looking to, if you have questions about those revisions or, or how to, be more inclusive with that language, um, feel free to reach out. I am definitely having a lot of these conversations already. So I'm here. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I'm, I was just wanting to let everybody else have their say before I ch chimed in, because I've um, had a lot to do with an organization here called Pride and Diversity, um, which is run by one of the health organizations in New South Wales, but it's a national uh, arm and they actually aren't funded by the government unlike the rest of their health organization. They make their money uh, by doing what Jake is doing now and they get paid for it. So that you subscribe to be part of Pride and Diversity. And I think there's another, another one called Sport and Diversity at the moment, which is the same organization, but they do it for sport. So they go around and the first thing they do is update their um, uh, their documentation. So things like the constitution, all the manuals, the training material, everything that an organization puts together, this is for business or it could be for sports clubs or it could be for sports federations. So whether it's uh, our multiple football codes or cricket or whatever, um, or in our case, it'd be our running stuff. So all of our guides, all of our discussions when we send the newsletter out it's stuff that we should be aware of and we should tailor our language to that too so they produce these guides they do training and i think their business model jake you might be interested in uh, we can discuss it another time is uh, that they you subscribe to being a member of pride and diversity and then there's various things that they can do for you on a personal level come do seminars talk to people um, you know do presentations for uh their work or their sport. Uh, and so it just um, bringing that, surfacing that information about non-binary 
documentation, address, um, you know, not uh, excluding people, not erasing people, um, bringing that to the fore inside an organization. So that's how they finance it. I can see for us, uh, it might be something that we probably want to sting Brooks for again, another grant that we might want to put in, or we might want to dip into our funds for, for um, you know, helping to produce such documentation if there's a cost involved. I know with all of this volunteer stuff, we're all volunteers and there's no end of work. There's plenty of work, but nobody gets paid for any of it. That's the only problem. And I'm sure you're acutely aware, Jake, that this is taking a lot of time uh, mm -hmm. for you. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure you're, you're sort of struggling to see if there's a, like if your gap in the market is a market or whether it's just work that you've got to do. Yeah, for sure. I, that, it, that's super exciting. I, I'm hearing about a few different organizations, um, you know, uh, around the world. So that, that's super, you know, helpful. I'm going to definitely add that to my list to look into, but I, I'll, yeah, I am definitely aware of the, the volunteer aspect. It's, it is a lot, but you know, it, it honestly, it's, uh, it's necessary. And, um, you know, it's really challenging when I have non-binary friends who, go to register for a race and uh, aren't able to, you know, they don't see themselves reflected in that registration and the, the race director has, you know, um, no, they, they are not willing to work with that runner to, to make any sort of accommodations or changes. So I definitely see a need for it. And uh, that's why we're, that's why we're doing it. Yep. Um, I, I wanted to just ask, um, I mean, I, I know just kind of from my own research, um, but within IFR, I mean, are there any, is there anyone having any sort of DEI conversations? I mean, would that, would those conversations be falling to this committee? Is there a DEI committee? Is there a DEI person? Um, what sort of conversations have or haven't been had um, in that regard? Hi, Jake. Hi, it's me again. I'm so sorry Hi. for like, taking the time again. So yeah, like I'm, I'm leading the um, I'm, I'm the uh, um, regional representative of Asia and Australia, uh, Australia and Asia Pacific. Um, and uh, next week, I'm hosting like say um, network, women's networking event for my region to connect like inspirational women, including the latest women who uh, started Chiang Mai front runners, and we have a couple of more seats. Um, like you now, who are led by women. Um, hopefully, we will launch more frontrunners in Asia. Um, yeah, like, you know, like I think so far the the DNI like um, initiatives has been done region by region. But um, I would love to exchange best practices with my counterparts in different regions as well. Um, yeah, it's like you know, like um, I'd love to connect with you after this as well. Thank you. How about that. All right. Yeah. No. Thank you. And I see from the chat that everybody's interested in getting hold of your um, document, this presentation, and any other uh, information you wish to share with us, Jake. I think uh, we'd like to probably, I'm, I don't know, if we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards, but I think we'd probably like to circle back and chat with you again about yeah. this right. initiative. Um, Sorry, can I just say something quickly? Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so, Jake, um, so, just to let you know, so I've had one of my, so it's Martin here from um, Northern Europe, and I've had um, one of my regional meetings lately. And um, one of the questions that was asked, um, especially by one of our largest clubs, um, London Frontrunners, was precisely, as you mentioned, how to tackle the non binary issue when it comes to races. And so we have had quite a substantial discussion. and. Um, one of the things I was personally quite surprised to find out as I was sort of preparing the answer for the clubs myself was to find out that um, at least in UK, you know, the all the regions in the world might work differently. But the way, you know, the UK works is we've got three major government bodies in terms of athletics. So I was quite surprised to find out that in terms of Scottish athletics, it was actually my local club and um, the neighboring club Glasgow Frontrunners that have basically um, in the last say the space of four years basically really petitioned the Scottish Athletics which was the local government body to say we are having several races a year and we are having such and such number of, of members and 
that consider themselves as non-binary, but there just isn't a category for that. And we don't necessarily think, you know, that's, that's the right approach forward. So essentially it was through rigorous communication with, uh, with like I said, the, the bodies that represent the um, different athletics organizations that we've actually managed to establish Scotland to be one of the first regions in Europe to actually have a non-binary category officially recognized within all the races that we do so essentially um if we if a club is to have a race now and especially if they are classified as an lgbtqia club they can now officially have an official non-binary categories uh, for members to partake and this is one of the this is one of the basically what what my response was to basically in this case, London frontrunners who are asking what can we do towards, you know, having a non-binary category because we're having such and such number of members that don't necessarily classify with the traditional male to female spectrum. And we're not sure how to actually, you know, um, proceed without currently having a non-binary category. So my answer really was try and push, you know, your local authorities, just have conversations, try and inform people. I mean, I think that's one of the things we were quite strong in in Scotland. And maybe it's just the fact that a lot of our clubs have a, quite a large number of members that would consider themselves non-binary and we're really trying to push that issue over the years. But that's that's essentially how we got around it. So just what I would share that. So thank Yeah, you. thank you so much. I had, I've spoken with... Um with Al Hopkins, who I believe is with Glasgow Frontrunners, or no, Edinburgh Frontrunners. Um, and they, they were super helpful in, in kind of sharing some of the journey with Scottish athletics, because um, I think yeah. they were super involved in that process. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I, the more, the more non-binary, you know, athletes I can connect with and have conversations with, like I said, I've chatted with about 30 different you know individuals or organizations at this point so just growing the list and having more conversations is wonderful so thank you thank you i'd just like to say um <clears throat> thank you jake for the excellent presentation you're you're very well spoken and and i appreciate the time and effort you put into the presentation that you gave today i really appreciate it and i do think that there's there's work to be done in so many, so many areas here. Um, a lot of them are sort of big and and but important um, nonetheless. I do think that there are more tactical things that clubs can be doing today. I know that because of some of the work that you're doing, and the fact that you pointed out the 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 sort of the verbiage in the IFR bylaws. I went back and looked at the bylaws for our own club and found that there were likewise dated and outdated verbiage there as well. So we did make an effort to update our club bylaws here in Palm Springs as a result of your efforts. We also made it a condition of, we made it a requirement for our race timing companies this year for our pride run that they're able to support a non-binary division. Not all of them are, and if they said, sorry, we can't do that, we would not consider using them. So making that a, I think, a, a, a requirement going forward is something that other clubs could do sort of immediately. It, they feel like small things, but I think small things lead to big things and they're things that can be done immediately um, while work is being done on sort of a larger scale to address this um, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So I yeah, just wanted I mean, to throw that out there. The way that we've structured this guide or that I've structured the guide is that it's basically before adding a division, like here are the steps you can do before adding a division, here are the steps you do if you've decided to add this new division, and then here are the follow-up steps. And that before steps process are the, as you spoke to, kind of the more simple things, right? The things you could do today without additional resources, money, time, like you know, how are you including the use and in, in the sharing of pronouns? You know, when, you're, when your club is circling up, how are you including that in your email sig signatures? Or if you're on a call, like adding them to your, to your name, like what are those things that we can do immediately that don't require extra effort um, that can create more of a welcoming and inclusive environment for all? Um, 
and you know, I, I'm very excited to get this this guide to a place where I can then like share it. And I would love to share it with with all of you. And I'm sure you'll see many posts on social media about it. Um, but yeah, those are those are some of those things that you can definitely you know any club can um, start incorporating today before even adding a division. Um, great. I mean, are, did, did anyone else have any other questions or thoughts on that? Um, I know y'all have a agenda to, to get to. <laughs> um, I, what I can do is I will, um, maybe Michael, should I just email you? Um, I can send you the, the link for the, um, the database, sure. um, as well as just this, this very brief presentation. Um, and then once the guide is in more of a, you know, more of a place to be shared, I can then share that with you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. That's great. Well, and I think, I think we want to see you again, Jake. So, and I'm sure you'll get a lot of conversations from um, members of this committee uh, about, about things. So thank you very much for getting us started. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's great to get, um, to get that from you. I know when we've talked about just the language in the um, constitution and various documents in the past, we have taken a long time. Um, so it's, it's an evolving conversation. We obviously have a lot of work to do, always have a lot of work to do on this. So mm -hmm, thank you very much. Sure. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you have a lovely rest of the meeting and uh, we'll, we'll chat soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Jake. So, yeah, thank you, Michael, for um, getting Jake uh, through, because I think it's something that's very important. We have to um, take it into account for all of our communications and for our documents. I think um, was Brad raised an interesting point there about the uh, official documents like the Constitution, we'd obviously have to have, if we wanted to change the language in that, come up with a new draft and have that in the AGM for change. So we'd need to get that through at our next AGM. Would people support having a committee work on that language and have a revised Constitution that we could potentially approve for the next AGM? Yeah, I think that's fine. Just a quick comment there. When we developed the Constitution and, the, and the, the group started, our intention was for it to be an inclusive group. And we were just working with the language at the time. So, you know, certainly our intentions were to have our organization be, be inclusive. So I think we can look at the language and see if there's issues we can cover. I'm happy yeah. to work on other people are, are interested as well. So who, so Alden, who else would be interested in being part of that? I read. Yeah. Booty. Booty, obviously. I think he is he at the run now. I think he might. Oh, he's sorry. Yes. Yep. I'll put you. Yep. We put you so, on the committee. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Martin, you sound like you've had some work on this. You. Yep. Perfect. Yes. Anybody else? <laughs> No, would I think we, we should then, get involved. I think we should we'll, try to invite we'll invite, it, Emma. We'll, we'll invite everybody um, mm -hmm. by email anyway. So anyone who wants to join can be part of that that uh, that team. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. Uh, anything else anyone wants to raise from Jake's discussion? And Bodhi, could you go on mute, please, because we can hear your speeches Sorry. in the background. <laughs> Thanks. No. Okay. Next item. Um, next item is Wayne's report. So Wayne, do you want to go on to your special projects? Yes, well, I'm not sure if they're my special projects. Um, Hong Kong, as you know, is now um, asking Guadalajara to co-host the gay games. I have can't tell you how many little Zoom meetings I've been at in the last 10 days, but it's been new, many, 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 many and I don't have any answers. The only thing that I can tell you is that Hong Kong is going to have the games at exactly the same date. That is the only positive information. But will, I give you. for example, the runs be moving, like will the North Americans no, be able to fly Air in Mexico and we just don't go know. downstairs? We or? don't know, we don't okay. know, we don't know. <laughs> but I think we as an organization should start and probably come forward with a plan 
because I don't think it's going to work into into such diverse cities. Um, or it might work better in Guadalajara for well, a lot Guadalajara, of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, there's, a, there's so many, so many issues. Um, Guadalajara haven't even said yes. Ah. Right. So, you know, I think Hong Kong have been too positive about this. Guadalajara haven't even uh, said yes. They haven't decided to do this. They don't know how it's going to be done. Um, they don't know whether they'll take on some sports. Uh, Seems strange to announce it then at that stage. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I think uh, Hong Kong might be worried about whether they're going to fail. Is that potentially the reason they did it? Hong, Wayne? Hong Kong is getting screwed by Beijing. Not It's nothing to do with gay stuff. It's just they're... They're um, worried about dissent it, and harmony. Yes, and um, Hong Kong keeps pushing for independence again and um, you know, more freedoms, and they're not going to get it. And every few weeks, uh, Beijing puts the screws on them. Hong Kong is very worried about this and what will happen um, in, a, in a year and a half's time. In my gut feeling is from talking to so many people in Hong Kong um, is that Hong Kong will have an Asian Games uh, and they will be the Asian-inspired sports, badminton, uh, dragon boat racing. And interesting for us is trail running. So well, that particular event might be retained in Hong Kong or the others might go to Guadalajara if Guadalajara accepts. And is there a time frame or a date? No, you... there is no, we have nothing. Okay. This it's situation. ASAP. It's everything is ASAP. Yep. So uh, it's really difficult, but we have to, um, I think we should be proactive and start saying, do we want to go to one city? Do we want to go to both cities? Uh, that's that's going to be a key and we have a lot of power do you have stats on like which would be preferred for from a running perspective aside from the fact that they want to keep trail running like would guadalajara be preferred from the number of people who participate in it to go to north to america i don't have those statistics okay because i think that we had those from paris didn't we that like what clubs attended and how many people were in each race and things like that do we have did they compile that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, is it something we need to ask the regional reps to ask their clubs about which would be your preferred well, it, if you are? It, it's, a, it's certainly, we should, yes, a good idea. We need to start saying. Um, if you had to choose. Question, if you had to choose, which one would you go to? So right. ma why, maybe. Why can't we do separate, but why can't we do you choose which one you go to. Are they going to be the exact same dates, Wayne? No, that's what I started this conversation with. No, it's not the I same. Fell, I, fell, I fell out. My internet went away. I just sent a chat saying that my internet's died twice today. You know, New York City doesn't have very good internet. Go figure. Um, so, okay, so two different dates. So theoretically... It could be two to... different dates. Okay. If you missed the important information is Guadalajara hasn't even accepted... I heard that part when I came back, yeah. right? So Guadalajara yeah. can pick what presumptive. they want and, yeah. The word they're using is presumptive, I saw. Yes, 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 yes. So, so I, I think no decisions to be made yet until things are finalized. Is Guadalajara going to join? Is Hong Kong going to actually go forward? What the dates will be? My guess is people from the U.S. are going to go to Guadalajara. That's um, exactly right. And that's, that's, that's a, a big... Uh, impact on the games yeah but my but my guess is we weren't going to have a huge number going to hong kong anyway um although it will draw some that's true uh if it's going to be in two places why don't we why can't we support both equally uh, it just depends on whether hong kong is going to jettison the races so i'm concerned that if they're only keeping trail then they've said in the past Wayne they're having trouble securing venues for the other races no no that, that is all um resolved well we're waiting they wait particularly for track and field and some other things I, 
I've been emphasizing they're going, they're moving away from any government organization or government owned uh, tracks, fields, whatever, and they're moving to privately owned places. So universities are being used a lot. So um, they're very worried that um, the government will come along two weeks before and say, well, no, you can't have this venue. So what they've done is they've, they're re-looking at venues. The venue they want to use heavily for running is a university, was a great big development going on, and it's not finished yet. And if you don't know, Hong Kong is in, I, I can't use any other word, but in the shit at the moment. Mm. They've got loads of um, COVID. Um, Beijing's unhappy that they've got so much COVID. They want to be a COVID-free country. Um, and it's rife in, in Hong Kong at the moment. Um, so things are moving slowly. <coughs> Pardon me. Well, let's move on from this because it just seems like there's nothing we can do but be concerned and worried. So, um, well, I, don't, I actually think we maybe should survey our members. So when we, if we do have to make a decision, we can clearly have some numbers. Uh, I was on. going to say it's not difficult to put together a poll. Um, and we could poll people on <laughs> on Facebook and Insta. Yep. Uh, so if you want to come up with some language around that, Wayne, and just we can circulate it by email and maybe then the comms team can put it up on the platforms and we can get you the results. So if we commit to doing that within the next, say, two weeks, do you think? I, I want to interject. I'm concerned that that could be perceived by Hong Kong as um, uh, hostile. Um, I, I feel like we shouldn't do anything until there's some clear decisions on what's going to be happening. And as, as Chris said, we can put together a, a survey very quickly. We could do it tomorrow if we needed to. Mm. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm concerned that I'm in a, that we'll get a call from someone in Hong Kong and say, Hey, what are you guys doing? You're, you're sabotaging us. So I, I feel like as, as the official governing body of one of the larger sports, we should sit back and let them work it out before we weigh in. Good point. Okay. I, I agree. We should have something more definitive to have a poll about as long as we can pull it together quickly. I'm not too concerned about what Hong Kong thinks since they're announcing presumptive things. All right. So at the moment, the only thing we know is Hong Kong is supposed to go ahead on the same date. So yes, should we just- The only thing positive Yes, and yes. I, I know everything can everything can change, but we know that from past uh, out games and things like that as well that everything can change. And so, not for almost two years, so we have time. So let's uh, let's leave it for the time being. We can catch it up on email if something develops, Wayne. If you've got yes. something concrete, yeah, um, we can do that. So that then delays all our other projects to do with. Um, uh, the gay games like scholarships and our AGM in that year and whatever. So just be 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 aware of that. Um, uh, the other project is we're coming up to International Front Runners Day, fifteenth of June. Um, I will be once. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but it's Mardi Gras next weekend, so it's kind of really super busy here. Um, but once Mardi Gras is over, we can, I'm going to start focusing on International Front Runners Day. I'm going to be asking members or clubs to put things on our social media, but why it's so good to be a front runner, why they join front runners, what their life, maybe their life's changed, who knows. Um, we want to um, emphasize the importance of front runners as part of our daily life weekly life whatever you want to call it um uh, and the impact it's had on that so um we will be uh, just asking for people to um, make some uh, stories up they can do videos they can do whatever they want that's all uh, undergo um and just to let you know um world pride 23 is in sydney um, Sydney Front Runners has been approved as an authorised sport, so we've got a, um, our World Pride run, World Pride slash Mardi Gras run in uh, next year. We've got a 5K, a 10K, and for those uh, like Brad and Alden, uh, we're, we're having a handbag toss. <laughs> so if you want to be the world champion handbag tosser, you need to come to Sydney and participate.
this is going to be next year, next yes. January, uh, February, late February, March, 2023. So yep. okay, and so that may be our our 2023 AGM a little early. Well, I've written that down, but um, yeah, uh, it is very early though. We would have yes. just had yep. the other one six yes. months later. We'll have another AGM. I don't know. You can have your other AGM in either Hong Kong or Guadalajara. <laughs> Yeah, eight months. Well, it would be like COP COP twenty six or whatever it is, and have it in Sham El Sheikh. <laughs> have it in Hawaii. That's halfway. That's true. That's true. That Brad can host. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard he's got so many of uh, in one of his estates. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's the end of uh, your projects report, Wayne. Maybe so. you can write something up about International Front Runners Day for the newsletter as well. You want to put a couple of paragraphs together for that? Sure. Wayne, should your your International Front Runner suggestion go to the Communications Committee? Um, I'm thinking maybe a nice little vignette of um, quick interviews, videos, almost like the uh, the old "It It Gets Better" videos that went out there. Yeah. What has Front Runners done for you in in 20, 10 seconds, twenty seconds, and go around the world, and that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. I had all those sorts of things in mind, but I hadn't heard from anybody, so that would be terrific. Throw it on the communications agenda. So pop that in for Martin Thomas and Woody. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a TikTok. Yeah. Okay. Um, Treasurer's report, Alden. Oh. Yeah. I've got your I've got your documents too. I should put them up just a second. But go ahead if you want to start. Yeah. Um, so uh, I think everyone got them. I distributed the. A couple of documents. The first one would be the the finalized uh, annual 2021 treasurer's report, and uh, just in in summary, um, it there was only a few additional items that uh, changed uh, following the AGM uh, things that happened in uh, December. So the the main the main things there, of course, is the twenty thousand dollars Brooks grant that we got, and as we mentioned before. Um, that was that's mostly distributed, except for the seven hundred and fifty dollars allocated to Hong Kong event and so forth. Um, I, so I have contacted them again. Um, it, it, the code is rubbish. <laughs> it's complicated, but anyway, we'll get there. Give me some time. We'll yeah. get there. Yep, that's fine. So that's the only thing that's pending. Uh, some of that was distributed in December, so it re is reflected in the twenty twenty one year end uh, report and. The rest, the remainder of it is in January of 2022. Uh, otherwise, the only additional thing that's in there is the delegate reimbursement. So um, I don't know if you want me to go through the figures. Everyone um, has that in front of them, I guess. Uh, but just to, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of skewed. The <laughs> numbers are a bit skewed just because of the donation amount in there, but the remaining, the ending balance uh, we have is uh, $26,790.26, as you see. And uh, the other uh, expenses are in line with the, the budget and what we had expected to pay between the bank fees, the uh, Federation of Gay Games fee and delegate reimbursement. And the club, club promotion item was the event that we had uh, coincident with the AGM uh, last year. So that's that's pretty straightforward. Otherwise, so all the 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 donation incoming is that twenty thousand dollars, and the or the Brooks stuff is the under that donations. Yes, exactly. So that's the and incoming I, donation right. to us, and then the outgoing donations to the clubs. Yes, exactly. Okay. And I debated right. whether to pull that out separately. It was just set up that way, and I hadn't uh, reworked my spreadsheet, so uh, I debated if we should. Have that because originally the donations there was was there because of uh, potentially we had donations from clubs to IFR just for our general fund. So yeah, I th I thought that was a donation to the Alden Travel Fund. <laughs> ah, sounds good to me. But <laughs> that wasn't how we did it. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so if I can go Alden, on if there's no other questions I, beyond I, that. 
I have a question about the club promote, and maybe that we do this afterwards. The club promotion amount that we did, we've had questions. Um, Michael, you asked about whether we were going to do that some more kind of club or regional promotions. And then also, I think um, we need to discuss, are we going to try to do another club promotion amount to um, to one of the, I don't know, I guess it's it's Amsterdam, whoever's going to, whatever club is closest to Euro games. Um, just following on, on that. Do we have any other Dutch clubs other than Amsterdam? Um, not at the moment, no. Amsterdam. And I... So that was a bit, a little bit discussed in our, uh, the last AGM where we talked about the budget. I was gonna send out the budget to everyone, but there is an amount, um, let's see. Hold on just one second. So we had, um, so we had contemplated that, and there, um, you know, we had we we have an amount allocated to um, uh, uh, IFR Social, which was um, originally visioned to be in Hong Kong, but uh, since that was deferred, we did have that amount in the in the budget, and there's the money for the AGM. So that's what was contemplated as far as those events and otherwise we had the, the long-standing items in there for club promotion uh, was uh, amounts for, for regions that we had that, that we allocated for them to use to promote uh, clubs in their region. So those are the, those are the amounts in the, in the budget. Michael, did and you wanna bring up your, your thoughts on that? I would, why don't, why don't we hold that uh, under new, till new business or other points? Okay. Just given this wasn't in the, in the budget before. Okay. Is there, is there no website fees at all? Uh, there, the, uh, the amount uh, that we paid previously was for two years. So there was no amount this, this past year. So there will be amount come in this upcoming year. Oh, okay, fair enough. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so otherwise, then um, the going on to the second document I sent out is the year, just the year to date treasures report. And it's really pretty simple because basically now all that we've we have there is our membership fees that have come in to date, and along with the bank fees associated with that, as well as the bank fees associated with distributing the Brooks grants. And then there's the amount for the books, grants, donations. That was the part done in, in uh, January, which was the $8,500. So our ending balance uh, just year to date is uh, $20,519.93. And as part of that, as I've mentioned, there's uh, $750 of the books grant remaining in that balance. And that does not reflect actually the dues that came in this morning because I printed this yesterday and sent it out. So there was one club that renewed uh, this morning. <laughs> what were the bank fees? Because I know with the wires, I took care of those and my bank picked up the wire fee. What were the Brooks bank fees? When we, when we uh, use PayPal, there's a fees associated with that. Oh. So, okay. and, uh, and that goes for the, the club renewals as well. So that's what that, the $120 in bank fees is all our PayPal fees. Okay, so it's club renewals and the Brooks. Okay. Right, it's a combination of both. I didn't separate it out in that column. Uh-huh. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. I don't know if there's any questions, but that's, that's where we stand currently. Um, that 20,000, just so folks know, it's made up of uh, $19,974.91 in our bank account. And we have uh, $545.02 in our PayPal account. So it's mostly in our, in our bank account. Any, any questions on that? All good. Okay, thank you. Can I, can I ask just a general question for Alden? And this probably affects Brad as well. 
but I've had uh, clubs in in local to Australia asking me, are membership numbers wrong? Because many clubs are reporting their Facebook membership or Strava membership or Instagram membership, and they're not reflecting real membership. Yeah, I think Emma had this question as well. Yeah. And my response was, Adelaide does the same thing. They report their Facebook membership, which yeah. is like 100, but they only have 20 or so that turn up for a run, maybe, well, maybe Perth, less. First also, it's, they reckon that it's double. Yeah. Uh, so they, they, they really only have about 120 members. I would take it from the. <laughs> I would take it from what the the local club has on their books, not their Strava membership or Facebook for our purposes. They can report whatever they like for publicity, but I would say from our membership, like in in order to determine how much we should be charging them for their membership dues, it should be what their official. I would say paid up, but some of them aren't paid up. Sometimes it's just they're just voluntary. But whatever the club says are their membership, the ones that they keep in contact with. Um, that's what I would take, not Facebook or Strava or anything else. Hi, everyone. Right. Um, yeah, so I think we have a, new, a couple of new clubs in my region that are still trying to figure out uh, how to, like, say, structure their club and also, like, say, um, figure out, like, with, if they're going to charge membership fees. I know that in Canada, for example, Ottawa Frontliners doesn't um, charge membership fees. Um, and then, like, you might want to figure out, like, say, how do they determine their own official memberships, for example? Um, you know, like the same thing is happening with newer clubs, and I think we should be uh, kinder and also, um, like, you know, just like be uh, patient with how they try to figure out themselves. So, you know, if they report that their number is a certain number, just take it as it is, and then, like, say, in the coming years, they'll come to sort uh, this out as well. So, yeah, I, I, I ask for the patience as well. Thank you. But well, it doesn't, but that's not the issue the, because new clubs are usually under 25 and they don't pay a fee. Um, it's, I, I understand it's that. The, I, I also... uh, it's the big clubs that are saying they've got, uh, for example, 250 members and they only have half that. Okay, so, like, so currently in my region, the largest one is Melbourne Frontliners and <clears> we do charge membership fees and then they get, it, gets, uh, it gets them uh, so, uh, like a Victorian Athletics membership and then Uh, so it seems Spectrum Internet isn't and the only internet that's having trouble. <laughs> no, my, my question for Alden is that, is, is that reflective in our books or is it a reflective in our accounts? Buddy, <laughs> we're losing you. Buddy, you're, Buddy, you're uh, I'll just mute him for a second. Buddy, your, your service is bad. I got Woody, Woody, Woody. We can't we can't understand you. Your service is breaking up. <laughs> okay, so in response to that, Wayne, what we've him. always done is it's been I can't mute him either. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you mute him? You control the I, I know, but I think he's um I, I, oh, he's uh, he's I think the quality is so bad that the client on his end is not allowing me to control <laughs> it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a clever thing. If you ever want to photo, uh, Zoom bomb something, you just make sure it's on a really dodgy connection. <laughs> Buddy, right. I think you're, you're, you're breaking up. We want to just uh, go on mute for a bit. I think we understood what you said and uh, other people have some stuff they want to talk about. Yeah, so we've always left it up to the clubs to establish their membership. Yeah. So and, and and as you say, some clubs are do not have a fee based membership, and so others do. And so it's always we've always relied on what the club reports as their membership. Mm -hmm. So we haven't we haven't reached down into the club to dictate uh, anything with that. And so there is a little bit of a new um, uh, world with the you know the, all the Facebook membership and so forth, which has grown up since then but we've always said what is you know the, the club defines what their membership is sure oh i agree but that's right and in the past we've had russian 
Russian front runners. I just saw Richard's <laughs> chat. Uh, we've had uh, Russian front runners. Let's get them. Let's get them on board. Uh, we we uh, have had Melbourne front runners reporting that they've got fewer than 50 members um, when they have, you know, 100 people turn up for a run, but they actually don't have that many, you know, official members. So it's it's a, it's a also a, a thing where we have that in uh, Sydney and we we had to constantly tell people that they need to register, they need to pay their front runners dues. Um, so they might be turning up for runs, but not being members, you know, not not taking the responsibility and not the financial responsibility of being members. So we always have to go with what the club reports and Alden keeps that in that spreadsheet um, for the AGM at least. Right. And does Melbourne have a paid membership fees? Yes, yes do. it does. And yeah, then like so it gets them like Victorian Athletics membership. So, so they have that basis or whichever they want to report. Yeah. Yes, they do. And you know, it's not it's it's up to them to levy decide to levy a fee. We don't force them to. And so, sure. for example, uh, you know, it might be the club president might decide not to have that the, the club committee might decide not to have fees and the president, if there's a IFR fee that they might charge to pay it out of their own pocket, because it is so small. Um, you know, we haven't revised that fee for how long? Over 10 years. Alden's on pause. Uh, just trying to unmute, unmute myself. Yeah, so it's been, what, 23 years. So <laughs> that, right. that was a step. Yeah. yeah. Never changed them. So, you right. know, if you, if you had, if you wanted to put budget items together to develop some sort of program of works, then I'm sure that you could fund it out of membership um, rather than having to get Brooks to do things too. But um, at the moment, this suits us. So I don't propose we change it. I'm just saying that it is, as you say, 23 years hasn't changed. And uh, I think for some of my other clubs, like cycling or um, triathlon or whatever, it's hundreds of dollars now to be members of those things annually, 140, 175, 375 to be tri triathlon Australia. So, um, you know, uh, I think $50 is not a big ask. Um, but anyway, that's for another time. Right, and in, any changes that would come up at the AGM if we want to discuss expanded budget items or then expanded fees to, to help us ascertain that. So it's up, yeah. up to us at the AGM. So if anybody does think that they have stuff that needs budget support, um, then I guess we put it into the special projects bucket and talk about that if you want, if people want to develop a budget for it. I mean, I can see we've got things in the past we funded just out of general revenue, which is like changing the logo. I think, um, you know, maybe if Jake needs to be paid or if somebody wants to do some work in that sort of space, there might be some little fees. But I think if it's only a few hundred dollars, then that's still in, within budget. But if it's bigger, if it's thousands, then people can come to us with a budget and suggest that but that's for the AGM. Uh, so that's the end of the treasurer's report, Alden? Yes, as long as there's no other questions. Thanks. Okay, uh, then that brings us to the next item, which is club renewals. <laughs> so how, how many derelict uh, accounts have we got? Okay, so I can give a quick, uh, just a quick intro to that, and then there may be other discussions that we can have around that. But so currently, um, as we said, we have 116 clubs from, uh, was our count from last year. And uh, the numbers change because I see someone just moved the Chiang Mai Club on the website. So, uh, but um, as of this morning, so with 116 clubs and five pending clubs, now I guess it's really 117 and four pending clubs. Uh, 70 clubs have renewed to date. Uh, 40 of those 70 are clubs that uh, paid dues. So in other words, more than 25 members. Um, out of the, so there's 46 clubs yet to renew uh, on that. And of, the, of that, there's 16 that had previously paid dues in the past so that there are, there are some larger clubs that are still outstanding. So what I would do is encourage the uh, reps to at this point now, since it were towards the end of February to contact their clubs with reminders uh, as far as the renewal process. If there's any questions, if they need to have the renewal notice resent to them so they can access the club information on the website, um, they can, uh, 
they can bug Brad about that to have the, <laughs> to yeah. uh, have him resend that information. But um, I want to encourage the reps to uh, you know remind the clubs at this stage that we need to. Uh, uh, you know, resolve the membership renewals for this year. As part of that, it's really important to stress that the, they need to go into the IFR website to update their, uh, their club info page and that to so that we know that that information is up to date and accurate. Um, and that's one of the conditions for renewal. Uh, most clubs have done that. Of course, if you go in through the, uh, the website, it sends you into the renewal process with that and updating that information. So that all happens seamlessly. We do have some issues with a couple of clubs where they sent in a check separately or there may be no fee due so that they just send the form to me. And uh, I have sent reminders out to those clubs to say you also need to go into the IFR website to review your information and to reflect uh, that so that it gets reflected as a current date uh, for their updates. The two clubs that um, I sent notices and they have not yet done that renewal is Hong Kong for one and Quebec. So um, they're the reps for those areas. Just keep that in mind uh, when you um, uh, have sent out the reminders. We need to remind them about making sure they update the IFR website. Thank you. So that's pretty much the, the intro to where we are with renewals. I don't know if there are specific questions or if there's other things that uh, um, we want to discuss. I have, I have one other point uh, but, uh, to, to talk about on that, but I thought I'd open up for any questions on that part. Hey, Alden, I have a specific question. And if you don't know the answer, we can, I can email you. But you mentioned the number of clubs that have paid dues in the past that have not yet right. updated. Do you know if Rossmore yeah. front runners is on that list? Because they have only ever had two members that I know of, yet for some reason they sent us a membership dues of $75 back in 2017. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think I can tell you what happened with Rossmore. I, I helped to kick them off. And um, initially the, the uh, first number of uh, walks had a lot of people, had 50, 60 people coming. And they had a they had a dinner where they had lots and lots of people. So I think it started off with a bang. And um, lately, Chris, the founder, who's really not involved with them anymore, has been renewing their um, membership. Yeah. But uh, they're yeah. they're pretty at this point. I think there there's not a lot happening. And I think Chris's explanation last year was that with COVID, things are kind of shut down. Um, okay. Do, do you have Chris's contact info? I do. Or do you, Okay. I do. Yep. The, the other thing is, yeah, just, um, Brad, just this might say, be a, that, okay, go ahead. I was just going to comment to Brad. I see that you added a placeholder for non-binary members and the club profile update, but that's not reflected on the general club list in terms of number of total members. Yeah, I know. Um, somebody brought that to my attention uh, a few weeks ago and yeah, I need to update that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I Sorry, Alden, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that, that's fine. Um, yeah, I was just going to comment that, the, yeah, we do have record of the Rossmore, you know, payment in 2019 for the 75. But as, as Richard said, they have renewed their information more recently. So they were, they were not counted in that list of 16 clubs that uh, formerly had paid that uh, are outstanding because that was only from last year to this year. Okay, great. Thanks. So, um, one, the one other point I was going to bring up was I've been talking with Brad um, since we're coordinating the renewal process and so forth and trying to um, make streamline the process or, or emphasize the process to make sure that the clubs know they have to go in and update the IFR website. As part of that, I had suggested to Brad that we streamline the renewal form, the, the physical paper form that we send out um, and to have it just be a more limited information, more like just an invoice when a club wants to send a check uh, in as opposed to updating through the uh, PayPal or credit card and the, web, the website. And uh, so I proposed a, a simplified version which just has the, the club name, the contact name and the, uh, and the contact uh, information for a phone or email address along with the amount. As part of that, um, I also, since our fee is just based on number of members, 
um, I would have I would put in that form just a, a line item for number of members period, because that's what our fee is based on. And that's what we're interested. The reason we had that breakdown of male and female, as Brad mentioned before, was this um, the the concern that we had with the Federation of Gay Games of trying to achieve gender parity. And um, so we, we were trying to gather that information, but we have never really used that information. And so um, I don't think it's critical to have it on the, the invoice form that they send back. Um, I think it's another issue whether we want to have them report it in the IFR website and what we may do with that. So I think there's, that's one of the issues I think we need to talk about and, uh, and see whether that includes other categories besides male and female. And of course the use of the word parity. If, um, if, if with two, you can have parity and with more, that's not, it's not quite the same beast anymore. But anyway, um, so the, uh, I just wanted to uh, sort of mention that as far as the dues renewal process and see if the steering committee is happy with just Brad and I proceeding with that and taking care of those kinds of issues or did we need to bring that before the, before the, uh, the steering committee and uh, review the form. So just looking for feedback on that. I think it's probably something like reviewing our documentation is something we can all um, work on, especially if we're going to be doing it in terms of that gender, gender parity or gender non-binary um, uh, inclusivity. So if you've got to change the form, I think it's enough to send it around by email, but I don't know anybody else is going to throw themselves in front of that bus and uh, look after the membership chasing anybody. Right, I, I was, I, I, I understand that part of with the constitution and going before everybody, I think that's fine. I just wondered specifically about the membership form that we sent out the, the essentially the invoice. So, yep. Yeah, I think but if I you can, just send it, could you send it out for comment before you start sure. sending it to clubs? Because I think uh, it, obviously it's better if we see it before um, it starts turning up and we see that there's some issues we'd like to raise. So I'm sure that, that you won't get any comments back, but if you could circulate it, that'd be great. Right, it won't be going out until next January. So, but right. certainly send, yeah. send it around, sure. We'll discuss it before then, I'm sure. <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> we'll come back to new, we'll come back to club renewals every meeting. <laughs> right. And as you can see, everyone, you could just go to your steering section and the, the information's there and it's live. Um, Brad and Alden keep that updated. And then I think is is it you just going to here right. to edit the documentation for your club? Right, that's what I wanted to emphasize, just to make sure that the reps, uh, I, the, which I didn't focus on, but I wanted to make sure that the reps realize that that information is there. They can go into the membership list, see who's outstanding in their region, who they need to send a reminder to. Hopefully, that's that's straightforward. And then when they're talking to the club, it's the individual club that would go into their club info page and update the information specific to their club. Yeah. So hopefully so, that, that's clear to everybody. So this form two, male, female, we'd need a non-binary and we'd need a total. But anyway, that's for another time. Right. Oh, so, 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 so question so. whether we're concerned about maintaining that information or what, that's all part of the discussion, I think. Brad, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, so this is what um, um, Michael was talking about. This form is actually not the form that the clubs actually fill out because the, the form that the clubs fill out does have a non-binary um, category in there. So this is what I need to update. Yeah. What, this, what the steering committee sees. So if you could put that on your list, I think we've all agreed that we want that. Yeah. Um, so, but there'll be probably more changes too, so. Actually, you know what, Brad, I wasn't referring to that, I was referring, Chris, if you close this form and go back to just the club list. Oh yeah, but it's it's also there as well. Right? Yeah, right. yeah I, in the column, I think it all comes from the same sheet, does it? Right, the right. Same data. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is what you're talking about, Michael. Right. Yeah. And obviously, right. we want right. another one, but I think what we need to see is that other one, and then this total column is being added here, but it doesn't reflect in the web the web form. So if Brad can add that total to, so that yeah. people can see five and five. And then it's the three non-binary, right. the little sums to the right number and blah, blah. Correct. While we're yeah. talking about club renewals, um, I was checking to see which clubs had proposed uh, to Brooks who haven't renewed. And I sent a renewal reminder to Omaha and the Provincetown. But since I have Chris and Wayne on the 
lying here. Uh, Sydney also has not renewed. And so uh, I, I bet you I know why. Because you still are using my old email address. And I've asked and asked and asked and asked to change my email address. Well, that's that's under your control, Wayne, right? On the club info page. On your renewal. Yes, that but should... the, re the email is not coming to us. The, the one that Brad uses to send out the renewal notice? Yes, yes. And I've written to Brad. I've written to Chris. Uh, <laughs> Brad, well, Brad you got... aren't you using, aren't you when... using what's on the oh. club info page? Well, let's change it now. What's it supposed <laughs> to be? It's... W Morgan to yeah the first the first bits are still the same two zero three five at iCloud.com. Oh my god, it's almost as old. <laughs> and then is and there a save button? The submit no. at the bottom. Submit. Are you in you're in their no, no, no. no, okay. So so the thing is only uh, regional reps can update clubs in their region. Ah, uh, so Buddy's got to change it. Right, so Buddy can change okay. it, or the okay. obvious yeah. Sydney can do it. Okay. Well, the, 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 the Sydney rep can change it, right, Brian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sydney. Yeah. I can only view, but Buddy can edit the Asia Pack. Right. So or, Wayne, or, just send or, him your email address and get him to change or the Sydney, it. Or the Sydney club rep. Right. Well, or the club. I am the club rep. I will do that. Okay. No, 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 no. You, prob you probably don't have edit access to this form, Wayne. Try it, but see how you go. I should have because I'm the club rep. Right? See how you go. In any I do case, it every have, year I've been doing it every year we've ever had it. <laughs> in any case, have your membership updated by March first, or Brooks isn't getting your application. <laughs> I'll do it right now, so it'll be February the twenty eighth, our uh, seventh. So there you are, handy for all, us all to know that yeah. um, sometimes we ask Brad to do stuff, but it's because we need to do it ourselves. That's Self service, handy. yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry we're so over time here. Um, the only other thing that I had, uh, and Martin will probably want to, Martin's brought this up a couple of times, so I'll let him talk to it as well. But talking to Buddy, um, we were trying to arrange some regional meetings for Buddy, and I've got a paid Zoom account that I use. Now, with the beginning of the pandemic, I just did that because I'm a member of so many body corporate and community associations and things like that, that I have, um, here we go slam uh we have paid meetings all the time um but uh it's difficult for me to then arrange meetings for other people with that account um and because i've got to start it and all that sort of stuff and there's all security around it so i was just wondering whether it would be sensible for us to have an ifr zoom account that we could use for the reps to have meetings in their regions would it, people think that that would be something we'd be happy to pay for it'd be a what is it, $20, $21 a year? So it's about $250. Uh, that's Australian, so it's probably a lot less in hard currency. Was that, was that per month, did you say? Or uh, it's tw a, a 20 yeah, Australian a month. Good. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> yeah. Would we be okay if, um, if that was funded by, if like, uh, if we arranged that in Alden, you could somehow pay for it? Is that? Chris, Chris doesn't, doesn't Zoom let you have free membership? You can only have a meeting for 45 minutes and then it can cut you off. And mm. they haven't always cut people off. I know I've been on a Sydney Front Runners meeting mm. where they didn't cut us off. Mm. Uh, but uh, it does come up with that thing that says, you know, you cheap bastard, you didn't pay. The <laughs> <laughs> You're, I'm going to extend you, but this is only supposed to be a 45 minute meeting. I think he'll by paying, does it give us the option to put in the front runner handle on the address? Oh, well, it would be we'd register it to the front runner's Gmail account or something like that. Well, but sometimes you'll get a company where it'll say Zoom front runners, Zoom dot front runners. Oh, you can you can load like the front runner's logo onto it as the thing that comes up. In right, the, but like, also, also the URL address. I believe you can add front runners on a certain pay level. You can add front runners into the URL address. I've seen that on various companies. Um, anyway, something to look into. I think, yeah, if you want to associate it with your URL, then that's easy. But mine still says at, at a basic level, it'll say Chris Richley is inviting you to a meeting. Right. 
um, even though the title of the call is different, but that's coming through from my chris.richley at gmail.com. So uh, I, I'm- I was just gonna mention, I, I pay, we had to get a, a Zoom subscription for our individual club board meetings for the last two years because we haven't been meeting, we meet monthly by Zoom. So we chalk it up to a club expense for Palm Springs front runners and walkers. And I use that same account to hold the regional rep meetings that I do quarterly with the for the US Western region. So I sort of double dip into my Palm Springs front runners and walkers Zoom account for my regional meetings. I don't know if that would be applicable to anyone else on the call, but I wouldn't need one for the US Western region because I'm using, I'm co-opting my Palm Springs front runners one, which and serves just, me and fine. How, and how much does that cost, Michael, just to information wise? I, I think it's, uh, I wanna say $149 a year or something like that. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what the US cost would be. The Australian cost is of course, you pay a you pay a foreign tax, and then on top of that, you pay the conversion. So, if if we were to subscribe to this, though, would would multiple people be able to control it? So, I think the idea would be what we do with the social media accounts is that people have people like the reps would have the password for it. Okay. To be able to arrange meetings, and um, and then what you'd see would be. You'd see, so I suppose there might be potential collisions where right. reps want to have meetings at the same time. But for example, um, Buddy and I started talking about this, but he's just going to take it on the chin to do this one himself because it gives him the control he needs. So you'd see all of the meetings that were upcoming set up down here um, for future. I mean, the other thing we could consider is teams where we get free meetings for up to about 40 people. But Buddy thought, and I agree that Teams is a bit of a shitty platform. It's still pretty bad. <laughs> and uh, I know that previously we had a couple of committee members who use Teams every day, but um, they're not here now. So I don't know what we we actually have a Teams um, presence, but nobody uses it. <laughs> I think Richard Richard was the only one that persisted with it, uh, mm. and. And I don't think anybody likes it. So Teams is free. Of course, there's a paid version of Teams as well, which gets you more stuff, like you'd be able to share the documents and collaborate on documents. But I don't see that people are pressing for it. So I'm still happy to leave it with this. I just thought, you know, rather than people, the reps shouldering the financial burden, unlike Michael, you know, your club pays for it. I've got a free account too. So it's no skin off my nose for like the AGM in this meeting. But um is that something we want to do? Would other people find it useful? I have a free Zoom account through work that it's a pretty robust one that I've shared with the regions also um, for the regional calls. So I, I'm fine with that, but I'm also fine if, if we want to buy one. It's not terribly expensive. Uh, this is Randy. I would use uh, that Zoom account if we had one. Yep. Yeah, and so I... It, seem, it seems like, uh, yeah, it's not too expensive. It seems like maybe it is something reasonable since, um, you know, makes it, it makes, facilitates really the, the groups having meetings since even the larger distances involved and even apart from the whole pandemic stuff going on. Um, as long as, and I think we can discuss it at the AGM for future ones, but I think if we wanted to do it sooner than later, we could probably cover it under club promotion uh, as a way to promote uh, clubs in the regions and stuff. So, which as a budget item. Yeah, so I think okay the comms, with, with the comms team, for example, meet, and so that would be handy for them. Right, and maybe and maybe it should be controlled by the secretary. As you said, if someone wants to reserve a time slot for having a meeting for their region, just to eliminate conflicts, just to let sure. the secretary know potentially. That makes sense, and it's a great idea since Alan has um, rung off, so we could just add it as a note for him <laughs> to do. <laughs> so uh, uh I, I guess if you're not here you get the action so we should, why don't we do that um i'll i'll give you the details alden so that we can maybe i'll work it through with people to register a zoom account just for this year and um we can make uh alan look after it if uh yeah and, and can't, can't. also just see what makes sense if it's if it's a better if it's better financially to have someone from the U.S. set it up or whatever, I'm not sure what the. 
I'd say yeah. it'd be better if you set it up, yes. Whether it works outside, I'm sure it'll work outside because everything else that we've, well, everything else we've done, we've been able to log in and administer from outside. So, you know, we've got our Gmail accounts, we've got our Twitter accounts, our Facebook, our everything else. Even with two-factor authentication, sometimes people have to ring me up and get the number. But um, yeah, it's all, it all seems to be working. Well, as a, as a nonprofit, you might want to check if there's a, a discount for nonprofits as well. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a nonprofit version of Teams as well, which we didn't look into. We might actually get free Teams as well. I'm not sure. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So we'll, we'll look into that a little bit more and let me know, Chris. Okay. Um, Martin, did you want to, I'm sorry we're so over time. Martin's still there. Uh, do you want to just, uh, you had a question about whether we can pay for the website. Do, were you proposing to um, <laughs> migrate it? I know that a lot of people have wanted to do something about the website and Brad said he's happy to keep going on it. Um, but did you have a, a suggestion? Well, I just kind of think in terms of the website that it would be nice if Brad, of course, could helm the process, but at least have some additional financial support. Like I'm happy even if Brad has to be paid to do it, but just it's a huge undertaking doing the website and just trying to make it a bit more appealing. Um, I'm just looking at other international LGBT sports organizations who have very vibrant and very visually pleasing sites so just kind of knowing that we're up against that it would be nice to just throw some money in that direction to make sure that we are in par with that as well i think it'd be fair also for our clubs to kind of see that oh this is actually a club that takes its image seriously yeah and i think this is no criticism on brad's part um the features that Brad has built up, over, no. built up over time on that website. Um, as we every time we think about doing anything with it, we come up against that. How will we replicate all that functionality in another platform? And it, that's where it stalls because it seems effortless, but there's an awful lot. As somebody who's looked after Sydney Front Runners website for about five years, I can tell you it's just an every every couple of days there's another little thing that niggles at you from managing a website. So um, Brad, do you want to comment? Well, no, and I would appreciate any design suggestions or anything. Um, I'm better at doing, you know, the back end stuff, all of the database stuff, all of that, that type of work. Um, so yeah, if people have suggestions, ideas, I, I'm more than willing to, you know, implement things. So yeah, Martin, if you've got some design aptitude to freshen up the, is it WordPress? What's the, no, what's I'm, the platform? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, we, we do, we can use WordPress if we want to. I'm currently, it's just um, like raw PHP. Old school. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, I get a lot know. of control doing that, so. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it, uh, I think you get a lot of control when you're familiar with the platform. So, right. um, uh, Martin, if you want to advance some ideas, maybe tic tac with Brad and happy yeah, to definitely. talk another time about it. But it's it's something we've always wanted to do. It's just who's got the time. That's the thing. And paying is is another thing. But um, but who would manage the process even if it was paid? That's the problem. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm definitely up for managing the process um, if we get the payments nailed up and I'm definitely up for liaisoning with Brad to um, update the website. So I think what you've got to come to us with is a proposal of what, like a budget and how long it would take and what you're intending to do. Um, okay. And maybe we can talk about that if you if you want to chat with me about it or and, and Brad and we can talk at the next meeting about it. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, perfect, thank you. I'll, I'll definitely get the budget and the proposal nailed down. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm, I mean, in the past, we've even talked about having our own app, for example, and I think it got stalled when the app developer was kind of went from 
wanting to charge us $26,000 to charge us a quarter of a million or something like that and couldn't get the act together and uh, we didn't know quite what we were signing up for. So as long as we've got something concrete we can talk about. Yeah, that that would be perfect. That would be perfect, Chris. And um, can I just mention something else at, um, at this point? And um, Richard, I don't know... Um, I've heard very briefly that you might have been involved in a little bit of this, but basically, so one of the things I've been personally sort of getting involved when it came to um, my clubs is, so one of the questions that was asked at um, my original meeting is essentially um, communication and essentially so one of the things that was pointed out is that the clubs were using a platform where basically um, it was a free platform but they've basically grown too big from like um, from being able to use the platform because the club had too many members so essentially what I suggested is I will look into an alternatives and I came across a platform, um, so it's essentially an app that um, you would download on your phone and it's specifically designed for LGBTQIA community and it's called Rally. So coincidentally, um, I got involved with the founder and I said, look, I've seen your platform and I think it has the potential you know, to to be something great and I think we could utilize this so I said I spoke from the perspective of original rap but I said you know we've got we're an organization that has over 110 clubs around the world and I think it would be great if we could basically have an app that would be easy to use and connect all the clubs within the region so the person who basically, so the founder seemed quite keen on that and we ended up talking more and essentially the idea was um, he's going to take our suggestions on board. So at the moment, it's in a stage where I'm trying to see if as many of the Europe clubs as possible would use the app and then if the app proves to be a success in terms of club management and connecting clubs within the region. What I would very much like to do is to have the app implemented across the whole front runners worldwide and to just have everyone, if possible, to essentially use the same app. Now, it needs to be pointed out, it's not exclusive for just running. It's every LGBTQIA sport, you know, in, in the world, but it does seem exclusive enough for the purpose of us using it in a sense that we can connect the clubs around the region and streamline our conversations with the clubs as well as the organization as a whole. So I, I, I know just... that I know that Richard would like to talk about this at length, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Whether my, we have my, the... dream, my my pet peeve, but uh, I've spoken with Duncan at Raleigh and Duncan wants to do this club by club initially. He doesn't want to bite off more than he can chew right away. Um, and he wants to hone it. He wants to make it perfect before he offers it to us to offer it all the clubs. I did tell him there is some competition in that um, uh, Hornet is, is rolling out something called Spaces. They had spoken to us about going uh, worldwide with us, but they decided we had too many demands. So they are now actually approaching, all, cl our clubs are being approached individually. Michael, I, I don't know if uh, they've approached Palm Springs yet. But uh, Chris, Christoph Wittig, uh, San Francisco front runner, who's the CEO of Hornet, is actually approaching clubs. Uh, so I did tell Duncan there is a little bit of a competition happening. And at this moment, if you're going club by club, it could become problematic when half the world is on Hornet and half the world is on Rally. And if we want to try to combine everybody, it will be much more difficult. All right. Look, I think too, when, you, when you're talking about a platform, whether it's Facebook, which is something that we, uh, you know, manage meetings and we manage uh, events and things like that through, but also people do it through Strava and Les Run do it through Meetup. So any platform, you've got to be aware that they could fold overnight or they could change their use policy and just exclude you. So 
having the website, I think we can never really leave that because it, it is our fallback in case the platform fails us. And we've seen, certainly, you see. Uh, yeah, certainly, Chris, and we all agree on that. And I think our primary sort of um, go-to way of any advertisements and news distributions should still be the website first and foremost. It's just that like, like you've emphasized in terms of the social networks, you know, they can sort of crash overnight and they aren't really, well, in, in my case, what I've noticed with a lot of my clubs is they're not really, I guess you could say fit to purpose in a sense of like, what the clubs have told me is they're having more and more members that don't necessarily, you know, use social media or want to be affiliated with any types of social media, which is essentially being problematic for them in a sense of, you know, especially in the last two or so years, so to speak, during COVID, they've all needed to adjust in a sense of having some sort of management as to who's coming to their activities, who's coming for their runs. And it was really difficult to do when, uh, you know, whether to have like a Facebook membership group when there were a lot of members that don't use Facebook. So they've all had to like um, alternate in, in, in a sense of um, how do we record our members? So to have an app that's specifically in this case, designed for the LGBT community. And that's really, it, it, its sole purpose is to basically record activities of the LGBT community. I think that that comes across a lot, a lot easier and a lot more members might accept that as opposed to just joining like a Facebook group or, you know, a Twitter page to sign up for the activities basically. Martin, I think given that we don't have the option to do a, national, a worldwide rollout yet for either Raleigh or, or Hornet, I, don't, I think we can table the discussion, but I'm wondering when we come back to it, whether it should first go to the communications committee and they can examine the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the innards, the mechanics, and mm -hmm. then offer a proposal. So I think for now, maybe just table it off of this, uh, uh, off of the steering committee, if that's okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Can I, I want to really pop on quick. Uh, I just want to, Golly, I want to, uh, hi, Golly. Sorry. Now, I, I know you've had this wonderful scintillating two hours. Uh, <laughs> a wonderful special, introduction. Special effects and music and everything. Um, you're, you're new to this process. They're, they're not usually this long. They're not usually this boring, I don't think. Um, but I did want to uh, ask you, uh, you have, you've been thrown into the deep end on uh, regional stuff now. And I know you probably know you need to help get your region to renew their, their memberships, each club. A lot of times you have to kind of hit them on the head a few times to get them to do that. Uh, the other thing you might want to be um, looking at is doing regional uh, outreach, uh, regional conference calls, et cetera, et cetera. I'm wondering what have you encountered so far in your time? Have you had a chance to talk to your clubs? No, I didn't. I okay. didn't do it right now, but uh, I will do it. <laughs> okay. This is the first meeting that I I heard a lot of my responsibilities. So yeah, right. I will, I will feel feel free to reach out to any of the regional reps. Everyone else here, rep wise, has already gone through this. Um, and you know, basically, your region is your fiefdom. Your region is your kingdom. You can, you can, you can make it yours. And it's just the only the only things I think that are important ever the, to the whole steering committee are the uh, memberships and then some regional communications. Other than that, do whatever you'd like. Western region has a regional um, pride run circuit. Um, other regions have other uh, road trips and things like that. So, you know, feel free to reach out for ideas, suggestions, assistance. Yeah, and I actually um, had a call with Buddy to take him through uh, all of the documents and the website and um, the various processes, Gally. So I might uh, set something up with you in the next couple of weeks. Uh, okay. We can just go through, you know, how you get information about things, what other people do. I uh, just take you through some of the some of the things that, like I've I've learned. Um, and if anybody else wants to join, uh, let me know. 
and we can yeah and by all means Gali if you have any questions you know I'm quite happy to have a meeting with you as well or a quick chat just to discuss anything you might need a hand with so quite happy to do that thank you great thank you Martin and so just for your information Martin is the uh, Euro Northern Europe rep we have a, a uh, also, Woody is the Asia PAC rep, and Thomas is the other member of the comms committee, but uh, it doesn't actually represent a region, but he just gets to sit in on all of these exciting meetings and listen to us drone on. So that's great. Hey, Thomas. <laughs> okay, um, I'm up to other business now, aside from announcing, reminding people, because it's already in the minutes, as I've been reminded, that we've got the AGM on at Neiman um, in the Euro Games on 26th of July. Um, does anybody have any other business? As far as, as far as the AGM, I just wanted to comment. Um, we probably should get information out about that fairly soon if we want to have good attendance. It always helps to publicize that early enough so people can plan. So it's just a, just a note just for us to get, get going on that. So would that be something the regional reps could circulate to say with the gay games, uh, the, sorry, the Euro games um, link and say, we're intending to have it during the Euro games and um, the further details I, later. I think, well, I think we need to uh, be potentially, more than, uh, well, uh, to start with, yeah, it could be a heads up, like hold the date kind of thing, but then I think we need to have more details as far as if we're going to have a, a zoom call as well as a physical meeting and, and nail down the time, that kind um, of thing. I we think with all the uncertainty, we're definitely going to have a Zoom call as part of it. Right. We right. need to coordinate with the um, with the organizers of Eurogames, and and if Amsterdam is going to be involved with Eurogames, which I'm guessing they are, maybe yeah, coordinate they are. with them. They are okay. So we'll need a, basically a room. Uh, Copenhagen gave us a nice room, and uh, we basically supplied the refreshments and. Uh, that's what we need. We need a room with Wi-Fi. That's all. Right, but it helps to have a local club to help help with that process. So yeah, that well, Amsterdam will be the club. So Martin, can you reach out to Amsterdam and find out oh, yeah. yes, whether definitely. we can get a room and a date, and some yeah, and, and good good internet, not Spectrum internet, not. Yes, I mean Is I it, can promise on anything on attack. everything, but good internet, like um, yeah, it is Scandinavia and Europe <laughs> after all, but yeah. I'll, I'll try and do my best. Thank you. Thank you. Any other other business? Yeah, so I'll make this quick, I promise. Um, I had made a request, and I don't know whether this is a full steering committee request or it's a specific to the treasurer, um, but I did make a request for $500 to, to help finance the Pride Circuit program that we do here in the US Western region. And what that is, is we incentivize clubs to run in pride run events for other clubs within the region. And if you run three pride run events over the course of a year, you get a award of some sort. Historically, they've been medals. This year, we're thinking about doing something other than a medal, but we want to restore the program. We haven't done it in the last two years. We wanna restore it in 2022. Um, when we've run it before, individual club members have laid out money to pay for the medals and the mailing of those medals out of their own pockets. Um, since really the goal of this is to promote camaraderie amongst the clubs within the region, um, I wanted to see if IFR could help with the financing of a program like this from the general funds rather than relying on the kindness of a couple of members to finance it again. So that was my request. So just for comments on that, I, in, in my view, it could fall under the club promotion. We had you know, allocated in our budget a one-time uh, $500 per region um, uh, use for uh, club promotion, which we've used a little bit, but we haven't haven't used it for the Western US region. So that's one option. Um, and I would, I would say if we, you know, we just have a discussion on the steering committee and, and see if that's uh, <laughs> to everyone's liking, if that's something that they'd like to, to, to do and, and use as a promotion item. 
it, it certainly doesn't sound frivolous, so I'd support it. For five hundred dollars, everybody happy? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I think carried. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So Michael, you, you talk to Alden. <laughs> I will. Thank and, you. <laughs> and it'd be nice if you've got quite a comprehensive program like that to maybe put a little bit together for the newsletter too, so that people can see what you've done, and then maybe other clubs will want to put will want to put the work in to do it as well. I'm sure it's um, a lot of fun. Yeah, doing all absolutely. the organising. Yep, we do. We have to we have to promote it pretty heavily for people to sort of grasp the concept. We have to do it early because you got to start before the first Pride Run kicks off for the new year. So. Yeah, we have a lot of sort of promotional stuff that I can share with the steering committee. Michael, did you miss Phoenix this year already or did they not have it this year? Uh, no, Phoenix has not happened. The only one that has come and gone is Las Vegas, but historically they haven't been part of the circuit, I don't think. But no, Phoenix, I think, come, is in three or four weeks from now. I feel like we they were added to the circuit last year and I knew Phoenix is usually your earliest, uh, but right, okay. All right, we're gonna so do, we, I mean, we were going to do it with or without the IFR funding. So this only sort of helps. So we're going to start promoting it any minute, any, any day now. But thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other business? Okay, we're fiercely over time. So should we uh, put it there? When will we have our next meeting? I was one, one quick thing, Chris, the hmm. that I just it's something I mentioned at the last steering committee, and that was uh, just whether we wanted to have the steering committee bios uh, accessible to the full membership as opposed to just the steering committee. You know, not all the, uh, the, the information that's on there as far as contact, but the, the bio section. So I just wondered if we people had thought more about that and if there's any, any thoughts on that, just as far as getting us better known to the population, <laughs> the larger population of IFR. I think we said at the AGM, everybody go and update your bios because I know mine's right, out of have, date. Have a, have a look at it and see if it's something it's <laughs> something you feel like you want to have have it accessible and that kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, I think mine's yeah quite out of date. So if everyone can update their bios, that should be under your control from the steering committee website. And then where would you see that being circulated? What um, how would we do that? You want it on Just the page on the website or something? Just as, as as part of the the general access website, so I don't know if Brad can speak to that. If that's a complicated issue, I think I'd asked him that once before. I'm not sure if he, if he had researched that. No, it, it it'll be easy to do. Um, we can just link it to because we do have um, a list of all the steering committee members. Committee. So right, right there, we can just you know just add adding a column with that link. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so here, for example. Western region, oh, right. I won't, we can have a right. look at, here we are. And there you've got that, no picture, but probably we want, maybe want to add a picture as well or link yeah. through to a document or something like that, but it's pretty bare bones because I think it's just a text box, isn't it? Right, right now, yes. So anyway, the first thing is to update your bio, please, everyone. And um, maybe we can talk about it in comms as well about how we want to surface that. Um, okay, so next meeting date. When do we want to meet again? Do we, we need something prior to the AGM? Um, yeah, so do we want to meet before Easter? Are we going to, so we set the date for the AGM on the 26th of July, right? So we can meet in May. 30th, yeah. 30th, yep. And somewhere, so do, somewhere do, we, do, we, do we want to meet um, after we've published the newsletter? So the first week of May? Mm -hmm. or, or sometime in May, yeah. Okay, so someone there sounds good. So we will aim maybe 
uh, Alain, if we could aim for the first weekend or the second weekend of of May and send out the usual doodle and people can say what their availability is like <laughs> for those uh, weekend oh, well. dates. Is this, is this time working okay for everyone? I know we're going to have some daylight savings changes very soon too, so I don't know what's going to be different. I think sometimes we have to move to night nighttime meetings or whatever because the time zones shift around. Okay, no objection. All right, so we'll, we'll see the first or second weekend of May for the next meeting. All right, thanks everybody. I'll send the link for the recording out Thank or you. Alan will send the link for the recording out and we'll get the minutes and everything together for you. Yep, and just a note, I did send out that form to everyone just a few minutes ago. So the, the one that I talked about for the invoice and the budget for 2022. So people Great. should be receiving. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thanks. Bye. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.